Live coding allows you to build your musical instrument as you are performing live. If you're interested in the live coding platform Super Collider, then this video is for you. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Kirsten and I'm an audiovisual artist under the name Naoki. I've also recently written the book Performing Electronic Music Live and one of my chapters is about live coding. So live coding is a practice where you stand on stage and code and that's what creates the music. It's really unusual and interesting. So I've got a special guest who's actually kindly written the tutorial for my chapter. His name is Eli Fieldsteel and he's even got his own YouTube channel dedicated to audio coding with Super Collider. So if you want to learn all there is to know about live coding and Super Collider, please do check out Eli's channel, which I will link down below in the description. He's also an assistant professor at the University of Illinois, so he really knows what he's talking about. So without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Eli now. Hello, my name is Eli Fieldsteel. Welcome to this introductory video on live coding, which serves as one of the tutorials that accompanies Kirsten Hermes' book, Performing Electronic Music Live. Live coding is a performance practice that involves writing the source code for a piece of music in real time as the piece is happening. There are actually lots of programming languages out there that are pretty optimized for this kind of thing, but for this video, we're going to be using Super Collider, a free open source and cross platform programming environment that can be downloaded at supercollider.github.io. This video was created with the assumption that writing code that makes music is a totally new concept for you. So you should be able to follow along and come away with a general understanding of these concepts. But you might also come away with more questions, possibly feeling a little confused, a little overwhelmed. If that's the case, just remember that live coding is a lot like learning how to play an instrument, in that you can get a sense of the basics pretty quickly, but it takes time to get really good at it in the same way that it takes many years of practice to become a piano virtuoso, for example. So if you want to be a live coding wizard someday, You've got to put in the practice hours, not just to get better, but also to develop a sense of personal style. Now, this video isn't going to provide a comprehensive foundation in coding or Super Collider, which unfortunately is totally beyond the scope of this video. But if you do want to learn more about Super Collider and the things it can do, you can check out my ongoing playlist of Super Collider tutorials at youtube.com slash Eli Fieldsteel. Once you've installed and opened Super Collider, the first thing you'll want to do is type and evaluate the following line of code, s.boot. To evaluate this line of code, make sure the mouse cursor is somewhere on this line, and then hold shift and press enter. And what this does is launch a second program called sc-synth, a local server application that runs invisibly in the background. As a convenience, the server is stored in the letter s when we launch Super Collider. SC Synth is basically the central audio engine for Super Collider. If you want to make sound, the first step is to boot the audio server. Since we want to focus on live coding, the next step that I prefer is to put ourselves inside of an object called proxy space, which is a special type of environment designed to facilitate live coding. So on a new line, type p equals proxy space dot new dot push. Again, shift enter to evaluate this line. And now, this proxy space named P is our current environment in which we can freely create, modify, and remove all sorts of little sound making items that serve as our live coding ingredients. For example, let's play some thing called SIG by typing and evaluating the following line. You won't hear anything yet, that's normal, but let's talk about what we've just done. We've created a type of object called node proxy. All you really need to know is that it's a placeholder for some signal process running on the audio server. We've named it tilde sig, and we've sent it a message that causes it to start playing. One thing to keep in mind is that all sound producing objects we create inside of a proxy space must start with this tilde character, followed by some lowercase letter, but after that you can use lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and underscores. But I usually like to keep the names nice and short because less typing means faster live coding. So now to hear something, the only thing left to do is write some code that defines how this node proxy is supposed to sound. And one of the most common ways to do that is to set it equal to a function. And functions are delineated with an enclosure of curly braces. And then we fill that function with some signal generating algorithm using classes called unit generators or UGENs. 
UGENs are the building blocks of digital audio signals, and they're a lot like modules on an analog synthesizer. So we have oscillator UGENs, noise generator UGENs, envelopes, filters, all sorts of stuff. For now, let's keep it simple and just make a sinusoidal oscillator using SinOSC. Dot AR tells it to generate values at the sample rate. 440 is the frequency of the oscillator in hertz. And this exclamation point two is a shortcut for creating an array containing copies of the thing it's being applied to. And without going into too much detail here, SuperCollider interprets arrays as multi-channel signals, as described in the document multi-channel expansion. Basically, this creates a two-channel oscillator instead of a monophonic one, so we'll hear it in both speakers instead of just one. Finally, we close the parentheses and use multiplication to simply scale the amplitude so that it's more comfortable to listen to. It's not a very exciting sound, but this is where the live coding comes in. We can change this function on the fly. For example, we can specify an array of two slightly different values for oscillator frequency. This puts a slightly different tone in each speaker, producing a binaural beating effect if you're using headphones. It's possible to transpose the pitch by multiplying the array by a value in semitones, which has been converted to the corresponding frequency ratio using dot MIDI ratio. And this ratio is applied to both numbers in the frequency array. We can change the amplitude. And if you prefer, you can provide a value in decibels, which is converted to a normalized amplitude with dot dB amp. We don't have to stop at just one unit generator either. We can incorporate others. Uh, for example, let's modulate the amplitude using a pulse wave generator with a frequency of six hertz, an initial phase of zero, and a 30% pulse width. As your ideas develop, you might want to copy, paste, and change the function more drastically so that you can easily switch back and forth between multiple sources. So now it's a stereo pink noise generator, amplitude reduced by 20 decibels. And to stop the sound, we have a couple of options. Obviously, we could just zero the amplitude, which doesn't conserve computer power or anything. It's still playing. It's just all zeros. But alternatively, we could set the source equal to nil. And nil is a value that represents uninitialized data. It's the value that SIG had before we started messing with it. And again, uh, SIG is still technically playing. All we have to do is set it equal to some sound producing function once again. And we also have the option of calling stop on the node proxy, optionally providing a fade time in seconds. Dot play, we'll bring it back again. If you want to do a full stop and reset, you can use clear, again, passing an optional fade time in seconds. And in this case, the node proxy resets to a neutral state. And not only does it stop playing, but the source function disappears as well. So it's like we never used it in the first place. Okay, so if you've got a node proxy playing and you change its source code, you might want a slow crossfade instead of a quick change from A to B. Every node proxy has a built-in fade time, which is 0.02 seconds by default but we can change this by setting it equal to some new value. And now anytime we change this proxy source, it'll crossfade from the previous source, whatever it is, to the new one. This is especially helpful for live coding styles that focus on ambient, slow moving textures and drones and stuff like that. So now we've seen some basic synthesis examples with sine wave oscillators, pulse waves, and pink noise, but maybe you want to work with samples instead. You know, stuff that's already been recorded and exists as an audio file that just gets played back. Now, the first step is to read a sound file into a buffer so that the audio server has access to it. On my desktop, I've got a short sample of machine noise called drone.wave. Now, inside a proxy space, what I like to do is use a single letter to keep a reference to an empty collection, like B equals parentheses with nothing inside, and then put things inside as needed. In the syntax B.put and then in parentheses, 
a name for the thing you want to store. It should start with a backslash followed by a lowercase letter, a comma, and then the thing to be stored, which in this case is a buffer containing our audio sample. So that is buffer.read, and then in parentheses, the name of the audio server, that's S, comma, and then a string representing the path to the audio file. And you can actually just drag and drop an audio file into Super Collider, and it'll automatically get converted into the appropriate file path. Evaluate that line, and then we can access that file with b.drone, or whatever you named it. For example, b.drone.numchannels tells us that it's a monophonic audio file. Duration tells us how long it is in seconds. And we can even audition it with the play message. If you have more files, you can load them into b using the same syntax, but making sure to use a different name and the appropriate file path. So play a proxy called buff. Play buff is a ugen that is useful for playing through an audio file stored in a buffer. We tell it the number of channels, which should match the number of channels in your audio file, a comma, and then the name of the buffer. Like before, it's good to multiply this sample player by some value to scale back the amplitude, you know, just to be on the safe side. And if it's a monophonic file, it's nice to use exclamation two to route it to both speakers, but you don't need to do this if you're already working with a stereo audio file. So it plays. Uh, now, if we want to change the playback speed, we can put a comma after the buffer name and then add a value where two means twice as fast, so that is up one octave. And 0.5 is twice as slow, so that's down one octave. And like before, this is a good opportunity to use MIDI ratio if we want to think in terms of semitones. If you want the sound file to loop, put a comma after MIDI ratio, and then put loop colon one. Uh, and here I think it's nice if we give the proxy a fade time. And remember, you can have as many active proxies as you like. So let's go ahead and bring back our modulated sine wave. And here, with a couple of active sound processes, we can just kind of start experimenting, make some changes, and maybe you'll come up with something interesting. We can even make more proxies if we feel like it. Anyway, once you're all finished, you can clear each individual node proxy, but if you have a lot of them going and you just want to fade everything out, you can just send a clear message to the proxy space itself. So that would be p.clear with an optional fade time in seconds. That's going to be it for this tutorial. There is, of course, a lot more that can be done. This video is just meant to give you an introduction to the absolute basics of live coding in Super Collider, but it's also meant to give you an appetite for learning more about all the exciting musical possibilities. So I'm going to finish out this video with an excerpt of a live coding performance, just a couple of minutes or so, to show you that it is possible to create more interesting music if you put in the time and effort to learn how. You're going to see a couple of things that weren't covered in this video, but if you want to learn more, come check out my Super Collider tutorial playlist at youtube.com slash Eli Fieldsteel. Thanks for watching.
Well, I'm actually quite baffled by how amazing this piece of music sounded, even though there's no DAW, no expensive plugins, no hardware synths, no traditional mixer. It's all completely done through code, and I think it completely changes my worldview as to what you need in order to make amazing music. It's quite impressive, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you liked watching this video and you want to see more tutorial videos about how you can perform electronic music live, please do make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell. By the way, if you want to check out Eli's patch that he used for the tutorial part of this video, I will also link that down below in the description. That's it from me for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!